Previously on Quest for Wonder. Are you going to help me find my wonder or not? It's a nice wheel though, isn't it? Mill engine. Have you ever wondered what we're made of? This is the DNA double helix. Maybe your wonder is just part of your DNA. Like, actually, genetically. What I meant is, what if you might have accidentally eaten it? Hey, Brian, you know what I'm thinking? Of course not. Telepathy has no basis in reality. No reputable experiment has replicated telepathy. And uh, the... no, You can't be this literal all of the time. Come on. Of course I can. I'm a physicist. Look, if you have accidentally eaten your wonder, well, we are around all this medical equipment. Yeah, of course. We can use physics. Ugh, why is it always physics? I remember when we were talking about X-ray diffraction back at the DNA. Well, I could get an X-ray. The German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen discovered X-rays back in 1885. And then Marie and Pierre Curie did all sorts of work on his discovery and radioactivity. And they all got the first ever Nobel Prize for physics in 1903. Marie Curie was actually the first woman to receive a Nobel Prize. Did you know that? Hmm. And now we can use their research to see if I've swallowed my wonder. Hmm, I don't really think that x-rays, you know, because they might be dangerous or something. The risks so I, are very small. I was thinking... They're quite big scissors. It'll be fine. I have read a lot of books about sewing, so I'm pretty much a self-taught surgeon, really. But, but, Look, we've been mucking around for too long. We can't have you wonderless. Who will inspire the children by looking wistfully at things and saying, Ooh, look, look at that. It is shiny. I don't think that's all I do. Well, it is probably the best thing you do, though. You know, you know that bit when you go, Oh, the second law of thermodynamics states that every natural thermodynamic process proceeds in the senses in which the sum of the entropies of all bodies taking part in the process is increased. Yeah. A lot of them aren't really hearing you say that. They're just looking at your twinkly hair thinking, point at something. No! Go on! Look, maybe I can still do the, oh, look at it bit without my wonder. Maybe I can fake it. I reckon you could, yeah. Yeah, go on then. Look, I I'll tell you what. Think of a nebula. Are you thinking of a nebula? Yeah. Which one? The Crab Nebula. Uh -huh. Or M1. Or uh, NGC 1952. Uh, Taurus A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 we haven't really got time for that. No, but I like no, it. Just keep thinking of it. Keep thinking of the Crab Nebula and say, oh, look at the beauty and intricacy of this supernova remnant. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the beauty of that intricacy of supernova remnant. A little bit fast, a little bit fast, a little bit aggressive, but a little bit slower, a little bit softer. Oh, look at the beauty and intricacy of the supernova remnant. No, all really slow and soft. Look Try it again. The, look at the, look at the beauty and intricacy of this soup. No, creepy, creepy. Look, you're doing it too terrifying, too creepy or too loud. Right, look. Look at the beauty and intricacy of the supernova remnant. No, that's too received, too received pronunciation. Look, I reckon the only thing we can do now is Look at that supernova remnant. No, too casual. Look. Oh, what? look at, look at that. Look, we're going to have to find this one because it's not working at all, right? So I think it's time to solve this by going to the fastest computer in Europe. What about this that, way. What about that supernova remnant? No, we're going to go to the fastest computer. Right, this. This. This is the fastest computer in Europe. Well, what I meant was the fastest computer in Europe in 1965. But you'll like it because it's one of the first computers to use transistors. Ah, transistors. That's physics, that is. Yeah, you like transistors, don't you? Yeah, I do. They're incredible. They're in everything. By controlling an electrical signal, they form the basis for all modern electronics. They were developed in 1947. Won the Nobel Prize in 1956 for its inventors and are arguably the greatest invention of the 20th century. Do you know what they used in computers before transistors? Uh, hamsters? Vacuum tubes. 
Lots of them. How many? 5,000 or more. Five? There you tell you we'd have trouble getting that home from Curry's. They use this for the Apollo Soyuz test project. I like space, me. This is bound to help. Right, so if we just ask it where your wonder has gone, its great big transistory vacuum tubey brain should be able to tell us. Right, so here we go. So, hello, BESM6. Can I call you Bessie? Hello. 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 Robin. What? It's rude, isn't it? You don't talk to this computer. You have to feed it information. Well, I talk to the little computer in my phone. But computers have come a long, long way in a very short period of time, Robin. That is true. I'd never fit this in my pocket, not even in my really big jacket. Also, you have to talk to that one because you've got little felt fingers and they don't work on a touchscreen. It's crazy to think, isn't it, that the memory and computational power of your phone is many times more powerful than all of the 355 of these that were built combined. So why not ask your phone there how to work a 50-year-old Russian supercomputer? OK. Hello, phone. How do we work a 50-year-old Russian supercomputer? The working of a Russian supercomputer is highly complicated and is best done by a qualified computer scientist or engineer, preferably fluent in Russian. As you are a comedian fluent in silly, I would suggest cutting to credits and the result will be printed out for you to read next episode. <laughs>